So this is how you get into an old Seagate external hard drive. Let's do it now. I've removed the foot. Slides out of here. The base of my drive has a, a rubber ring. And these are the three slots that you need to access with this key, literally an Allen key, 2.5mm or 330 seconds. In through the three slots, push firmly down. What you're looking for are these three tabs. You can see how if you push them firmly, they will release. That allows you to slide the cover off. At the other end of the um, lid are three sliding latches that look like that. So now you can get to the four screws at last. Use a Torx drive to release the screws. Very straightforward. And the rest is plain sailing. Um, one last thing before you remove the hard drive from the bridging card, release the power supply connector. It's pretty tight and if you try and pull it out after you've unscrewed the hard drive, you can put a lot of stress on the solder joints. So here's my lovely new Western Digital 500 gig parallel ATA drive. Western Digital are the only ones who still make the damn thing. Seagate gave up in 2007. But the Western Digital hard drive has a lot of reinforcing, a very different structure at the base. Uh, these ribs and fins aren't on the Seagate drive, which is quite flush. And as a result, even though you can fit the connectors, the internal connectors at one end and the power supply that'll all fit neatly when you turn it around the section which houses the external connectors doesn't fit into or underneath the base of the hard drive so as a result I'm stuck with reinstalling my 160 gig hard drive so this is how you do it align the pins carefully it's easy to get them out just by one row and push the power supply connector back in. Quite a firm push, as I mentioned before. And mount the uh, hard drive to the bridging card. Everything's pretty plain sailing from here. The cover for the internal connectors slides over with a bit of a, a bit of a jiggle here and there to align the, uh, the latches on this side. The other side's pretty easy. It just snaps over the uh, of the casing screws. Heat sinks mounted so that the bulky end of the heat sink is towards the top or the label side of the hard drive. So then I took the base of the enclosure, the part with the raised rubber ring, laid it down and inserted two of the blue rubber bushings around the posts. The other two sit on top of the posts. Slide them carefully on. Then took the black section and mounted its two posts into the other two rubber bushings. Jiggle them on. In hindsight, it may have been easier to install the drive into the black section first to make it easier to get the external connectors through the holes in the black casing. Once it's squeezed down firmly, replace the Torx screws Nice and tight, like so, and then slide the cover back onto the enclosure, slide the three connectors in first. Once they're in position, then you can snap the other three locking connectors into place and reattach the foot if you're going to run the drive vertically. And there you have it, done.